The following is a public service announcement. Hey everybody, this is the Horror PSA presented by Scary Nerd, and we're your hosts, Paul, Saul, and Angie. So, we're talking Silver Bullet this week. Mm -hmm. The movie came out in 1986, I believe. 85? 85. 85. 85. 85. 85. 85. (laughs) All right. 1985. Silver Bullet. And if you're confused about which one one this is, it's the one where Gary Busey fights a werewolf. Yep. That's it's, the highlight no, of no, the film. No, 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 no. <laughs> Gary Busey gets his ass kicked by a werewolf. Gary Busey doesn't do hey, anything in this movie. He fights that werewolf. He, he gets he gets those okay, fine. children. <laughs> that's, that's, okay, let's let's not right, jump yeah, to the end already. Into our heads. Okay, all right, all right. So, so is this pre accident Gary Busey or post? This is pre. You saw the movie, yes. didn't you? See him? He was I think, I think he was just drunk the whole time. I think he wasn't. Yeah. He wasn't doing. A portrayal of a drunk. I think he was actually just drunk the whole time. I mean, he was perfect casting, right? Yep. Got an alcohol problem. <laughs> All right. Okay, so, so I found it funny that Gary Busey got top billing in the credits as well. Like, well, I mean, I mean Corey Haim's a little out. kid and everything. And like Everett McGill, though, who plays the Reverend, I think, I don't know. He's, he's a very popular actor, but I don't know if he, I guess at the time back in the mid 80s, if I guess Gary Busey was more popular than him. And really, do you want to highlight that he's in it to make it seem like you're going to give legit. away the ending? No, I just think give that if away you... The, okay, wait. Wait till we get there. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> there's something I have to say about giving away the ending. Because there's... Uh, no, yeah. well, you get it towards the middle of the movie, but you don't know anything okay, in the beginning. Okay, wait till we get there. Okay, okay, fine. Let's start with the first kill. The first kill, that drunk guy. Railroad drunk Arnie. Yes. He gets his head cut off. Poor Arnie. And nobody I, even knows that a werewolf took him out. They just think all drunk Arnie died on the track. Would, I mean, I know it's the <laughs> mid-80s and you don't have you know full-on forensics teams and all that, but how can you look at that and be like, yep. The head just completely came yep, off the, by itself. The railroad <laughs> smashed his neck. He was like, no, it didn't. Look, that thing just was clean, it's cleanly off. just taken off. Yeah, they did some poor over. police work on that thing mm-hmm. too, because you would think, okay, if his head got well, cut off by the by the train, you would think the head would get all beat up or whatever need or there'd be. There'd be like a smashed neck part, like it yeah. would have. It would be. It would have. Uh, it would have like yeah, like it would have like sealed the bag and everything like else would have stayed in. It would have like, been all chopped up and. Well, I think that's the other thing about the movie too is that the police were pretty inept. Like there was, there was two of them. There, there was, was two. two of them. <laughs> yeah, in the in the beginning parts, he's like calling for you know like the national guard or backup or somebody and. Yeah, there's two of them. So there's no one. Yeah. He's calling for help. He's like, there's two cops here. We have murders happening. Someone and it was us. a very young two. Terry O'Quinn who was the cop, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. With hair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, okay, so the drunk guy dies, and that's in spring. So it's the beginning of summer is where we our yeah, story think, takes place. She mentions like just a couple of weeks before school's about to end for yeah. the summer. She talks about how the last full moon of the spring was when the drunk guy dies. And we're talking about the little voiceover, so you guys understand. There's, yes. there's, a, little bit, there's, yes. a, there's narration that pretty much introduces the movie and yes. her looking back on her yes. experience. Her, yes. It's narrated by Janie as an adult. Who is voiced by Tova Feltza, who we all know from The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead, yes. What does she play? She was um, oh, come on, Deanna. She was Deanna. That's what it was. Yeah. I knew I heard listen, that. If you listen to her voice and now, you go back and watch it. Yep. Listen to her voice and you'll realize, oh my God, that's totally Deanna. Yep. That's the one thing I was trying to figure out. I was like, why do I know that voice? Yep. It's a, it's a weird just little voiceover because it doesn't happen throughout the whole movie. It's it just, just happens in like these chunks. weird yeah. spots <laughs> of where it happens. Yeah, but it's in the summer and Janie and her whole family is at some sort of town event. Do we uh, do we even know what the town event was? It's Probably like the end of summer or yeah. the beginning of summer. Yeah, thing. something like. But Janie's hey, all fancy. She's got no, her, it, it she's was got her for, pantyhose on. It was for the MedQ drive, I think. That's what it was. Which we the, never they, know what it is. They had the 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 total like raised. Oh, thing yeah, yeah, yeah. On the side oh, okay. of the stage, it said MedQ Drive, and that you know, like the money thermometer. Maybe MedQ thing. was a big thing in the eighties, and we just don't know because we were babies. <laughs> that and there's there's <laughs> another thing that I don't get about later in the movie that I'll talk about that kind of baffles me that I've seen in other things that I don't understand. But let's wait till we get there. Okay, so we're at the we're at the little town thing right now, where Janie is in is bored. At she's the little, bored. she's bored. She she's just, bored. she wants to go figure out something else to do, and her parents are like, "Go make sure your brother's okay." And that's when we get our first look at Corey Haim. Mm-hmm. 
who is in a wheelchair, but he's not very good at pretending to he be in a wheelchair. He is terrible. There's, there's, <laughs> there's other stuff that he did that I was like, how is somebody who is paraplegic I'm like, no, doing you, that? You, you can't hold up your legs with your leg. No, honey. There, <laughs> yeah, there's a there's another part later in the movie where I'm like, what? Like, you are terrible at this. Like, you're not even trying. No, kid, not even trying. Uh, but so is, is the Reverend Lester Lowe, by the way, who really that's just... That's not a good name to have. Like, Lester. Lester Lowe. <laughs> like, especially for a priest, like, Lester Lowe. There's something yeah, about that. Yeah, I know where that, you're getting right? at. I, I, yeah, I know. It just, it just sounds seedy. So it's funny, like, are we just now getting introduced to Lester? Like, is he yeah. the new reverend or Nobody has he really been knows. this a while? Young. Like, it kind of doesn't it. go into it. It kind of just like, hey, here's Reverend mm-hmm. Mo. You would assume that he was a newer Lester. one because of how young he is. Yeah. He the is great thing about this little conjecture, this little thing that they're at with their town is it you you get to see that little side thing with jamie walking around with their between the guy and the girl and she's like i'm pregnant and it's your baby and he's like it's not my baby and your oven not my bun yeah i wrote that it? as well, <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> it's your oven and ate my bun <laughs> Yo, i and i well, i found it funny that that jamie is she's kind of prim and proper at times and other times she's not yeah but in the same token she she says god damn it about getting Mm-hmm. Getting uh, tricked to them by the snake and all that, and when she falls, but then she calls her brother and everybody. She's like, "You're a booger," and I'm like, "Really? Like that's where you? Maybe that's where insults. you reserve? Yeah, some like, of the slang. I don't. Some get. of the insults. But again, it could dated. just be. Well, I mean, and Stephen King may have wrote this book. He wrote a child, and when he was a child, it was the fifties. So yeah. I suppose. <laughs> like, yeah. Maybe he so, just figured that's the kind of slang you use. Goddamn, it was, was more acceptable than calling <laughs> yeah. people actual names yes. or calling them a booger. <laughs> For whatever reason. But yeah, so we get to see more of the town. We get to see that all these people kind of have some secrets about them. It's a small town. It's It's a typical like small town America. People have secrets, but everyone Mm -hmm. pretends that they love each other. Yeah, it was like a potluck thing for the whole town. That's what she says in the beginning. And I'm like, who the hell does this with their whole town? Well, in towns where you only have two police officers. Yes, that's that's (laughs) that's what it is. If you only got two cops, everyone's going to pull together. (laughs) You know everyone, and that's just the way you live your life. Okay, so so after everything happens, they're in the car. The oh, wait, wait, we didn't even go into the prank. Oh, the, the snake thing? The snake prank, yeah. Found a little garter snake, and they said, oh, we're going to do something with it. Mm-hmm. And then Janie falls, and she ruins your hose. She gets a, yeah, she gets holes in the knee mm-hmm. part, and then she gets scared again and falls in the mud and, and throws I mean, a little fit. I'd get mad, too, but I think she kind of over it. <laughs> it's just some muddy water. I <laughs> think it's kind of meant to portray the she's kind of fed up with having to look after her brother. Because I think she even calls it, like, in the in the voiceover, she's like, Marty was my burden, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, she my burden goes to on bear. About it. Yeah. And then so everything happens. They're back in the car driving home. And this is the first time that I don't know how many times in the movie that someone says, it's not my fault. He's crippled. Yeah. <laughs> they like, don't even it say how like, it happened. That's the thing about <laughs> it. I was like, beaten. They, they just say all the time, like, oh, you crippled, crippled and I'm this. Like, and I'm are like, we supposed wow. to be making this child feel like he's a burden on everyone? <laughs> <Is that> the <laughs> goal? But he's kind of okay with it, though. He's just like, oh, well, my legs don't work. And then there's that one scene where he's staring longingly at the children's legs. And I'm just like, I, I wish I could do that. You're <laughs> skipping ahead. I am like skipping severely. ahead. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they get home and I think it's funny. That she just starts to go inside and her parents are like, help your brother. And then she just kind of gets him out. And, and leaves him the there. Scene. Yeah, it's kind of like she was like, will your damn self up the ramp. He was struggling. Like there was at one point where he's like almost falling behind, yeah. back on it. Like, he's going <laughs> to fall on it. The other thing I did notice about the town, though, it was very, very handicap-friendly. Every place had mm-hmm. ramps for them. Yeah. Apparently, yes. That's the one thing they do. The one thing that they did. And they went out of their way to make sure that it was friendly for him <laughs> to get there. See, it, it, he's the town's burden. But That's even, like, when she's, like, getting him out of the van, and, like, or the the car or whatever, and she's the obviously wagon, the station the wagon. Station she was wagon. obviously upset, but, like, it gets close to, like, abuse. Like, she's like, hurry up! <laughs> Like get in your seat, and I was like, "Whoa, Janie, chill out." That's that's a <laughs> is that a Stephen King trademark? Because think know. about Pet Cemetery and everything. And you have the invalid sister, and it's like our burdens to bear. Did, he, did something happen to him? I don't he, know. Maybe he had a brother that nobody ever talked about. I don't that, know. That, uh, older sister, an older sibling. It's yeah, a possibility, a, or he just had he he saw that as a small child, and that's something that scared him as having that. He's got a he's got an evil twin individual. That they, that they left in the. Uh, no, that's a dark the, half. The, the true story. The, the, it is. It is like. <laughs> He just lives in the uh, attic or something. Yeah. Okay, so they get home, and Janie's a, a bitch, for lack of a better word. 
typical old sister home. sometimes. And then she's basically like, hey, your drunk uncle is, is coming to visit oh, us. Yeah, he's he's getting right, a divorce. Right. So she pretty much crashes Marty down by saying, oh, this uncle that you're so proud of and you're happy about it. Well, this is his third divorce. He's getting divorced again. To me, it seemed like that uncle was the one person who treated him like an equal. Yeah, I think he was like everybody else. Yeah, and yeah. I think that's a recurring theme with him because there's, yeah. there's a scene later where he argues, Drunkle Red and the mom argue about, you know, he's got strikes against him and you know, kind of that whole thing. But he's just going to give up. Like, why? His legs don't work. Nothing else. Like, <laughs> like, you guys call him cripple all the time. Yeah. Like, right? Like, you guys are like, he's the burden to bear. Like, <laughs> I don't get Watch it. Watch your brother yeah. because we don't want to. We're parents and, you know, you're his older sister. You deal with it. Like, he's got so many things against him. Like, he seems... Like he's gonna be all right. He's just in a wheelchair. Mm-hmm. But maybe that's our maybe that's our age. Maybe that's the 2019 version of how we look at things now, not the 50s mm. or 1985 version. So basically, she tells him, you know, he's getting a divorce. Oh, I thought it was funny that his line was like, "Well, I never liked Sheila anyway. Maybe I like the next one better." So he kind of <laughs> has a clue who his uncle is. Yeah. I mean, it's not. It's not that far fetched him to be like, yeah, another divorce, whatever. Well, they it's did happening. mention that was his third. Yeah, it's yeah. his third. So uh, hey, it, it is. It's just becoming well, commonplace. And it's a I, I different do like for every Thanksgiving. <laughs> I do like that we see Janie and um, Marty make up, and Marty kind of is like, "Here's the money for some pantyhose," and Janie kind of softens a little bit. But at the same, like, it, I just it feels like two characters. Jane feels like two different characters to me at times, like. On one hand, she can be a great sister and very understanding and listening. And other times, she's just awful to him. <laughs> like they, they definitely awful. have a weird dynamic. It, it definitely is one of those things where it's, it showcases where like she's super like tired of his crap. And then the other times, it's like, okay, we need to stick together because we are all we have. Because then it, it really does become, you know, we have each other. Our parents won't listen to us. We kind of have Drunkle Red, but who knows if he's going to listen to us or be coherent enough to help us do anything. So they were kind of the only people they've got in their lives. Mm, yeah. Oh, and I think we need to point out that Drunkle Red was Gary Busey. Yeah. Oh, of What's course. Gary B- well, yeah. Well, I, I would hope that people would understand that. Uh, well, they know he's if there's a drunk. Who's playing, if yeah. there's a drunk in this, it's got to <laughs> be We didn't Gary think Busey. we had to explain who the drunk was. <laughs> Drunkle Red, Gary Busey. <laughs> Okay, so then... So that leads into the, the first, first kill. Well, the, sorry. Well, yeah. the second kill. The second kill. The second, second kill, because we go into... What I wrote down was like, is this Forrest Gump's house? Is this some sort of like... Uh, that was a big ass house. Why do moms just like, play pianos on stormy days? Like, that's a theme with Stephen wait, King. Like, wasn't it, it like... The he, his mom's it, playing the piano. Was <laughs> that Hughes her out. mom's house? Or was that... I took it as some sort of like... I think it was her mom's house. I thought it was some sort of like, uh, like not like halfway house or boarding house. Is it boarding, it's a boarding house? house? Yeah, yeah like Forrest Gump's mom house, did. Yeah. What did she do? That's that's what it took me. I was like, this is like Forrest Gump's house. Like there's the the rocking chairs out in the on the porch and oh, all that. Yeah. So it's kind of like mm-hmm. it, it, that's what it reminds me it of. Like, been she's a just house. staying at the boarding house because she's got nowhere to stay because she's got a bun in the oven that no one claims. Okay, and okay, so the guy like he's like it's not my bun or whatever. And it kind of makes it seem like that's an affair or that's an inappropriate relationship, right? Yeah. It kind of makes it seem that way. But then the bitch has an 8 by 10 of this guy. <laughs> she, yeah. like, I wrote down though. <laughs> like, was that even the same guy in the pic? No it idea. didn't look like the same guy to me. <laughs> I'm like why does she have like a full blown portrait of this man yeah, she's just like, randomly it was like, like secretly a, seeing? It was an 8 by 10 headshot of some guy. Yeah. And I'm like that is that even the same guy? Because it didn't look the same to me at all. Well, it could have been that she was having the affair and be like, oh, no. I didn't I'm pretty know. sure. Yeah, it, it was an affair, definitely, because he kind of was like, don't ever pull me away like this. And, yeah. And I think he mentions a wife. I don't remember, but I'm pretty I think sure. He did. I, think, I think you're right. I think he did mention something like that. So I'm pretty sure away. it's an affair, but I don't think the guy in the picture was the same guy. <laughs> that, so maybe that was like <laughs> an ex or that, you know, her husband. I mean, who knows, but. Don't Even, think it was the same guy. Yeah, either way, she she figures, okay, nobody wants this baby, so she's mm-hmm. got to do what she's got to do. And the werewolf is very considerate. He doesn't mess with anybody else in the house. He climbs that lattice right up to her room. Because <laughs> I didn't know that werewolves climbed up the, the side of houses. I just thought... <laughs> well, this one does. <laughs> this one is very specific about who he wants to take out. And he couldn't, couldn't, right he have, the uh, couldn't he have just jumped up there? You what would if, think what did so, climb? but no. And the climbing the lattice was <laughs> very important. What, is the lattice going to hold him? I wouldn't think so, I but I mean, they so did either. a POV of the werewolf <laughs> climbing up to the window. It was very... It was very very awkward i feel because <laughs> i was yeah. like do werewolves and, do this is that 
and he tore her to shreds. I think that yeah. was, that was a pretty gruesome scene. It was well, yeah, the thing it. that cracked me up about that scene was the old lady like fumbling around trying to grab the gun and like, what are you gonna do with that old lady? I know, and like all she heard was crashes, and her first thing is like, oh, better get my gun. But she does it so like haphazardly. That it's like, oh my god! <laughs> like she's hey, just those going were crazy. murder screams. So of course mm-hmm. you go and get your gun and you go figure out what's but what. What was she gonna do with a little revolver? Yeah, that's well, the thing that she didn't me know what was up there. Okay, it's not like you're like, okay, that must be a werewolf. But I'm if you look at the old lady, she was kind of frail. Hey, so you Marty think gonna she's gonna shoot that revolver and it's gonna well, smack her in the face? <laughs> she wasn't gonna do anything either way, whether it was a werewolf or not. But, but she was. She trying. had to try. She but was, actually, I'm helping. To me, that's the thing that cracked me out though is how she was fumbling around. I'm like, what? She's trying to get a gun. I was like, I'm gonna laugh. She's getting a shotgun. But like, oh no, it's a little revolver. Teeny little baby gun. And then she, she goes is. into the room, and then what do you hear? The old lady, typical old lady, screams. She has mm-hmm. her piano hands. She's ready to shoot somebody. Mm-hmm. Okay, so lady gets killed. Lady gets lady killed. Lady gets killed, and then the next scene, I think, we go into the bar. To yeah. Where, to where ass hat. Yes, we have the whole we have the whole could be scene. <laughs> where it's like could be that somebody blah blah blah, and I'm mm-hmm. like oh. And it, I found it funny throughout the whole movie that they keep mentioning like the curfew, the curfew. Unless you're going to go to the bar and get drunk. Then everybody <laughs> yeah. can go and well, get a posse. You, like. Well, the other thing about it, though, is, you know, small town, because there's always the meeting points. And this place happens to be where everybody meets is mm-hmm. what the bar. It is. And it's funny because everyone go, everyone knows that, like, all right, well, I'm going to go look for somebody or go to, like, we got to go to the bar. That's where you everybody's go. At the everybody's bar. there. Everybody's at the bar. Anyone who's out is at the bar. Everyone else is apparently at home with the kids because it's curfew. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the other thing about it, though. I remember once they get to the bar, they have the argument with those two guys about the what it could be, what could it be. Yeah, and then the ass hat is like, the cops aren't doing anything. And one of the two cops in this town is in the bar, naturally. Well, and he's <laughs> off. His shift is over. It's time to drink. And of course, Where he gets else offended. Do you, go? you go to the one bar in town. And then everybody's just listening to this at, this ass hat talk. And then the one guy's like, hey, you haven't paid your taxes, so. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so everybody knows too everybody much about knows, each other in yeah, this town. This town has some secrets. but I found it my... funny. I found it funny in the bar in the background. There was a Red Baron pizza sign. <laughs> I found that Wait, hilarious. What? There was a Red Baron pizza sign, like, a, awesome. like an old school tin Red Baron pizza. I'm like, do they make Red Baron pizzas at this bar? I'm like, mm. that is hilarious. I hate I'm Actually, just saying, I I'd probably thing... eat a Red Baron pizza if I, I was give, drunk. Give me an old style and some Red Baron pizza. <laughs> I was about to say, is like when the one thing that you noticed, I was going to say if they would have brought everything full circle if we would have seen some sort of advertisement for Burger King. Mm, yeah. <laughs> hey, this, wasn't a, this wasn't a Netflix movie. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, I love the old like staples in this movie, though, like the old bartender who has the Peacemaker. The Peacemaker. Bat. How do you not love the Peacemaker? <laughs> Baseball bat. What is it? Cool your thermostats, fellas. (laughs) Cool your thermostats. Where the peacemaker will take care of you. But, like, anybody from a small town, I'm from a small town, knows that old man. We've seen that old man. He's probably yelled at us at least once. That's an old man that's a staple in every small town. (laughs) Is he always the bartender or is he other things? No, he sometimes is a cop. He sometimes, he's just, he just depends on what kind of old man he is. The he varies from town to town. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, the old bartender is one of. My favorites in that scene. He is. He's. He's. Uh, he is. Uh, okay. So pretty much what we learn at the bar scene is everybody starting to point the. Oh, what is it? Everyone's pointing fingers. Everyone's. Yeah, nobody uh, knows what's to... going on. Things are happening in the town. I mean, there's only got to be like 500 of them, and two of them have died at this point. So that's you know. Well, they well pretty much technically <laughs> one has died and a pretty gruesome death. The yeah. other one. He got run over by the train, apparently. He so got no drunk one, and got ran over no by the train. No one gave a shit about him. He was just the drunk railroad worker that didn't. Uh, yep. Didn't do anything. So if they were doing CSI, they would have been able to figure out a long time ago that the first death was the yeah. railroad driver. But no. Nope. There's two sheriffs. There's two sheriffs. There's, there's, there's two <laughs> cops there's no in this CSI? town. Who's the CSI? We got, we got, <laughs> see, that's the thing we got ruined this year. We, it's all CSI. We're like, wait a minute. <laughs> yep. And then, okay, so the next the next day so after then, the yeah, bar. Yeah, the next day you see. We see more of Marty's friends. Marty and he, he, walks, the, <laughs> he walks the girl home. He can't walk, remember? He has that weird little motorized yeah, wheelchair. He's, mm-hmm. he's silver bullet. This is the first time he says silver bullet. Yeah, that he's is. He's like, me and the silver bullet will take you home. Which is his wheelchair. It's the, that's the name of the movie. And why does this girl's family, the, the girl and the dad, why do they have these horrible, horrible southern accents? accents? Yeah. Like, like, hers is way worse than the dad's. Like, the dad's is at least decent. 
Like you could tell, like he was yeah. maybe actually had it. The girl, I don't know. And it's such a trope. It's such the poor white uneducated dad who hates, <laughs> who doesn't, who wants to electrocute all the cripple people. Is and I love, <laughs> I love how like they're talking and and the dad's like, "Get your heads over here!" And then she gives him that little kiss. I'm like, "Oh, that, I wrote down this will piss him off." Mm-hmm. Like she did that on purpose. Like, "Oh yeah, dude, we'll fuck you here, little yep. damn cripples." And then yeah, he goes into it. I don't know the thing about it, though, is you can see he's just a drunk, redneck dad. Yeah. And what made it even better was that he was watching wrestling. Mm-hmm. While he's drunk. Yeah, well, <laughs> not the other thing about it, though. We all know what wrestling is. Yep. But the thing about it, though, is he's watching it like he's watching boxing. Yep. That's what hey, we know. He still him. believed. <laughs> it was still real to him, damn it, back then. <laughs> he had those, was it Red Stripe he was drinking? It lo- that's I what think. I thought it was. I thought it was Red Stripe. I don't think it was Red Stripe. I don't think that guy would drink Jamaican beer. That's why I was beer. so confused. Like, no. It was like... But drunkies don't that? care. They don't realize it's Jamaican beer. That bottle looked okay. like it was a red stripe. Mm-hmm. Where are you going to get <laughs> red stripe in this shit little town? That We're is not in, even that's, sure where it is. Well, okay. In the short story, obviously, it's in it's in Maine in one of the... I don't know somewhere if it's... Somewhere in Maine. It's mm-hmm. somewhere in Maine that's in the vicinity of Derry and Castle Rock and everywhere where Stephen King's stories always take it's place. In, it's in so the... So it's assumed that it's all it in does Maine. in no way, shape, or form look like it's in the Northeast. I mean, no. they clearly not where they no. filmed it. Oh, no. He's watching wrestling, and, and, then, and he then he hears he has, some rambling. He has the greatest line in the whole movie. Oh, that hurts my parts! <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's, that thing's gonna keep. I love that uh, part his so much. Favorite part of the it whole really is movie. like that. That makes the movie for me. It's like <laughs> this movie is utter crap at times. But other times, other times it's like, so great. There are really good things about this movie, then there are really crappy things about this movie. And but I'm this like, puts it into the echelon of this is this is the movie for me. No, it is. no, that that part right oh, there. Oh yeah, this <laughs> that's what it does. The movie. Like, it is the whole movie. That, yeah. Oh, that hurts my parts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now we got to get into what hurts his parts. Well, he's watching the wrestling because he he goes. No, he into means the... what's actually going to hurt his. Oh, parts. you mean uh, <laughs> the death you mean scene. when his parts actually get hurt? <laughs> yes, where his parts actually get hurt. <laughs> he had a really great death scene. Yeah, that, I, I really agree. enjoyed his death scene. I also have to point out that he was he was very poor, white, uneducated, poor guy. Right, that's the whole like backstory they basically gave his character. So what you're saying was he's poor. Yeah. Yes, but no, they walk into this gorgeous greenhouse. <laughs> yeah, he oh has a gosh. he has a huge greenhouse. I mean, what is this, this yeah, isn't a the, poor person's greenhouse. The house was the house was decent. He had a greenhouse, and then he had also like it wasn't like a barn, but it was like, it was like another shed in the yeah. background as well. Like he had a pretty good plot of land over here yeah, for being. So a, like, what is going on with this? What character? does this guy do for a living? I, he was just a very confusing character with his. Like maybe he he was poor because he bought all this beautiful land. <laughs> Not only that greenhouse was huge. It was like he turned a few times. <laughs> Yeah, going around looking. For he had stuff. room, and that werewolf had a complete space underneath the greenhouse to get up under him, and then pull him up down into the ground. But he, I think he had my favorite death of the whole movie, just because of how when he got pulled up, you see the what is the plank? Yeah, pretty much impale him, and he just bleeds mm-hmm. everywhere. Yeah, this is the first. This is one of the great gore scenes of the movie. I thought it was funny when he's walking in, like he gets the shotgun and he's walking over to the greenhouse and he's kind of, he's kind of slumped over and kind of hunched and like going, I wrote down that like, he reminded me of like a cartoon, like Scooby-Doo villain, the way yeah. he's just kind of like, <laughs> s- like stalking over there, like what's going to go on over here? More like an Elmer Fudd. Like he's an old man something. Yeah, like who's... he's, he's very comical and, but he does have the great, great death. Yeah, I, I just I move it. through the death scenes so seamlessly in this movie. It's like the townspeople are like, "Oh my god, things are happening!" But then the next time you see, everybody's just fine and hanging out. The thing that like- kind of <laughs> the thing that kind of confused me though is like, I mean, you get the first death, the second death. Okay, there's to me it was okay. He's justifying these deaths by, okay, this girl is trying to kill herself, so I'm yeah. gonna kill her before she she's, does. Yeah, it. she's gonna kill herself, kill the unborn baby. Like, but then it goes, goes back to just randomness when he kills this guy. Well, he's kind of a dick. Yeah, it's kind of like this is the what I thought about it too. He's kind of he's kind of like Hannibal Lecter to be like, well, if I kill this guy, it makes the town better. Like no one's gonna miss this guy. No one is gonna miss. That's how he's justifying it. No one is gonna miss Mister Sturmfuller was his name. Well, that's something we'll get back to once we get to a big plot point of the movie on the justification of the certain killings. Yeah. Yeah. So I think he justifies that, but. I, the one thing I wrote down about that is like 
he knocked over the pots and he made him come out to him. He so could have the, yeah. the werewolf could have come in there. He just he just climbed up the lattice and killed the other lady. Yeah. But he waits and he has the guy come to him. So I'm like, does he enjoying this in playing with this guy? Or was he just tired from climbing the lattice and having to rampage through that? Yeah, maybe he climbed the lattice and was like, werewolves don't do this. He's like, shit, man, I (laughs) am tired. (laughs) Next time, I'm just going to get them to come to me. You know what? I'm going to hide under these these floorboards with too much space. And if you want to go back to the whole he's plotting these... Uh, the werewolf is going after people to make the town better. His next kill is hilarious then, <laughs> because it is a child who everyone clearly hates in this town. <laughs> well, that too. Brady's kind of a dick. Brady, too. even Marty. Okay, even so him Marty and Marty like... are flying kites. Even though there's a curfew and there's a murderer on the loose, these Here's two are the... at a park by themselves. Here's the other thing where Corey Haim played a terrible paraplegic. Why is that boy in a tree? <laughs> How the hell do you get on the tree is what I'm trying to figure out. The thing that I found funny about that, when when they're arguing in the car about Janie getting scared by Brady and Marty with the snake and everything, the mom literally says, what did you want him to do? Climb up to the tree and stop Brady? <laughs> and then two scenes later or whatever, Marty he's like, he's climb like trees. He, Brady's like, yeah, what get my happens? kite. What happens? He climbs the tree. He climbs yeah, he's like, oh, tree. here, Brady, here's your kite. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing in the tree? And I'm convinced that Marty never liked Brady, or he would have said something. He'd be like, Marty, or he was like, Brady, are you coming? And Brady's like, yeah, in a little bit. And if he, there's a murderer out, and you're not supposed to be by yourself, you've been him, like, hey, yeah. friend, come home, he because there's a murderer that, out. He gave him that long, ominous look, like, you're going to die, Brady. This is the last time I see you. Mm-hmm. But no, everybody hated Brady. We all hated Brady. He and was a dick kid. It, he, maybe he had, I think he kind of had internal conflict, like, should I say something to Brady or not? And he was kind of looking, but then Janie was like, hurry the fuck up, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> Janie really is not She nice. was like, they're mad at me because you're late Your for dinner. Your ass isn't home for dinner, and I took forever to find you. And then I find you here because she says, dinner was already an hour ago, and it took forever to find like, you. Like, oh, I forgot. Like, but again, that's the other thing, too. Like I said, how the hell did he freaking get on that tree? Right? You just see him all of a sudden going on there, and when you see him get down, like there's no way in the hell and he did that. There are murders going on in this town. And Why are care. you just letting your kid in a wheelchair go? All you have your crippled, handicapped child out in the open or in the cl- You don't even think he's going to make it through life, but you think he's going to be fine to go out into this town? Yes, yeah, none of the murder? parents in this town. Again, this is like none of the parents in this town. Are watching their fucking kids. No, not and at all. And it's like every every night, like reminder about the curfew, mm. reminder about the curfew. Unless you're going be to home. the bar, be home. Yeah. So that leads into and then they, the they bar go again. to the bar. So yeah, we're back we're at the bar. We're back <laughs> at the bar because there's nothing else to do in this town besides get drunk and oh, yeah. get eaten by the werewolf. So we're back at the bar and tensions are rising again and name calling and then all of a sudden Brady's dad comes in and is like, "Have you seen my, my son? son?" And then cut to bloody kite. Dun, the dun, bloody dun. kite. I wrote down. I'm like, that's evidence, man. What are you just walking just around with that it shit? Up, walking around like again. CSI has ruined us all. <gasps> but it that's really probably how stuff has like, was yeah. done back in the 80s. You don't this. mess <laughs> with the crime scene. <laughs> that we is found this bloody and kite. He's like, I have a bloody kite, I'm, and he's like, the dad comes up and he just runs over. I'm like, oh no, dude, yeah, don't, don't, don't look at no. that. Like you can't go, you can't go look at that. That's the last. That's the the one image that's always going to be in your head. Nope. And then the next the next time we see Marty, he's like, it's probably a werewolf. <laughs> he just guessed that it's <laughs> a werewolf. Okay. Yeah, we go. Okay, so it goes to that. <laughs> we cut over to the funeral scene, and it's so depressing. I mean, they have funerals, that weird funerals are depressing enough, but yet yeah, the weird organ, the player. weird organ, mm. kind of half. You know, the lady that played the organ, yes. I was like, she is creepy on her own. And Drunkle Red is really struggling, struggling not to drink. He, you know, the he, thing, he the thing that got, what was, what was it? They're playing Amazing Grace, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah. she was. Playing that was like Amazing the Grace. creepiest <laughs> version I have ever heard of it on that damn organ. <laughs> uh-huh. see, it, it was just. And then it just seemed like sometimes it was off key, but the way they did it was just so freaking it's creepy. It's a poor church. Maybe mm-hmm. the Med Q Drive is going to help buy the new organ because oh, let's a, hope so. It needs yeah. a tuning or, or you know, to teach the lady to actually play the organ. Maybe that's what it was for. Yeah. Okay, so we get past the funeral scene mm-hmm. and we're back at the so bar. Yeah, we know. Well, we get past the funeral scene and then Drunk Red is like, "I'm going to take Marty home," and I'm like, "Really? 
the whole time, like the mom keeps arguing back and forth with drunk. Like, Red I don't think you should be with him. Yeah. But you're she's like, yeah, man. drive him home in your convertible with my crippled son. He'll Even be though fine. you just had to restrain yourself from. Even taking though, that again, there is a killer <laughs> out on the loose, you and they know, just killed a child. You know that if you brought the flask, he's been drinking at some point. Yep, but here you so, go, kid. Yeah, yeah, get in the car get with drunk Red. Red. We'll be fine. And then Marty. And yeah, that's solves the whole case. That's where exposition Marty shows up, and he's like, you know what? It's a monster. I think mm-hmm. it's a werewolf. It's totally a werewolf. That's what's happening. It's like, why do you just no jump to werewolf? Why do you, like, you go there? <laughs> he probably has not. He hasn't seen the bodies. Of what leads to this? No, it's well, nothing. it is a small town, and there's only two cops, so maybe there's a lot of things that people here in town. So does there's, that there's mean, no secrets? I guess like, so, I mean, you could have. Oh God! So that means that the two cops had to collect the bodies. Yeah. Well, I would hope there's a coroner and all that in this town, unless they're pulling double Did duty. Did you see a coroner? Right. Well, they could be pulling double duty. Well, there's no CSI team, that's for damn nope. sure. Nope. But so we get past that. Marty discovers he solves the movie by Mar- saying yeah, it's a Marty's werewolf. Marty's all, hey, there's a werewolf. And then the next is the bar. And the, the, back the, at the bar. Yeah, we, back at the bar. Like, back at the bar. No, he's, he's, getting he, their pitchforks no, ready. He goes, he goes into it, and he's like, she says she heard some growling, and I'm like, oh, naturally, it's a werewolf. It's a werewolf. <laughs> That's where you go, right? And then Drunk Red's like, oh, well, the full moon, you know, the cycles come out in full moon. I'm like, where are you, where is this family right, getting right? their information? Right. Like, you're just blaming it on anything that comes to your head. And then, so yes, we go back to the bar, we're ready to form a posse, and I find it hilarious that the the dickhead Ass that hat. didn't pay his taxes yeah. is the one organizing the posse. Who we later come to find out in the movie through the scenes is the owner of the gun shop. Yep. So he's like, "Hey, <laughs> I am an American. He's just a great I'm taking man. advantage of the situation. <laughs> Remington shotguns. He put that sign out like yeah. single action, two hundred, double shotguns. action, three hundred dollars. He's like, he's like, I am seizing this opportunity. Let's all form a posse, buy new guns, and go out looking for the werewolf. Well, that's the thing about it though. The bar though that cracked me up again. They start saying how inept. The police is us, mm-hmm. and then that dude gives out that big old huge speech about no, we need v- vigilantes, we need anti private justice. There private you go, private justice. justice. Yeah. We need private justice. Pretty much telling them, let's get all these drunk hillbillies to go around and start I know. And for then whatever this thing is. Brady's dad comes in, he's like, my son was torn to pieces, and everybody's like, yeah, we need to go find that. I'm like, no, Dude. that means you go home. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> my son was torn to pieces. Then he has a Polaroid, and I'm like, was was that the Polaroid of the dead body or just your kid? I'm like, you need to like just go home. Okay. Like, I would have been here's, like, okay, thanks, peace, I'm out. Like, here's the thing. What is with the black armband, the the thing? I, mean, I figured I know, it was for I know, mourning. I know it's a funeral thing, and I know it's for mourning, but like I don't know what the black armband really signifies. Like I've never understood that. I know I've seen it in other things. I've never actually seen anyone wear it. But it's, it's very out of Hell never Hydra see, to me. The only time was, I've really ever seen the black, like you said, it's, like, it's like, the mourning thing. But the thing about it, the only time I've ever seen a black band is when on officer badges. So I don't know if that kind of. No, like he had that yeah. black yeah. armband like yeah. Arm around, thing. yeah, like uh, over his yeah. arm on his on for his suit. Uh, I love how the dad is like, go gr- dig up my son and tell him about private justice. Like, <laughs> imagine if the cop was just like, well, okay then, and walked out of the I'm gonna go. Ba- I'm gonna go I, dig up your son. I, I guess don't have time to him. for this. So the thing that <laughs> cra- <laughs> so here's the thing: Brady's dad riles up all the drunk kill billies. Yeah, mm-hmm. like they're they're in there, and the sheriff starts yelling at everybody. He was like, calm down. And then you see everyone, like the bartender specifically, is like, "All right, guys, yeah." yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. he calms everybody down too, and he's like, "All right, he's right." But then Brady's dad comes in, and is like, "Look at my son. Here's a Polaroid of him." And for some reason, that's like, "Yeah, let's go out." Yeah, and, get and then this. so everyone's like, "I switch sides again. Let's that's go." Like, right? Let's go out into the dangerous woods where we can't really see anything because it's dark. You know, that makes sense. They got fed more booze and they went crazy. Mm-hmm. It was like the South yeah, so, episode. With oh, yeah. and it's it's so bad. <laughs> it's like those those cliches. It's like let's all walk into this big giant wall of fog. We can't see through. It just reminded me <laughs> of a whole what, Civil War thing in in South Park where it was the the flavored liquor. And they're like, oh, everybody got them liquored up all again. Let's get them riled up. And <laughs> it really off. is. So like they all just like, all right, we're gonna go here. We've all got our assignments, and they and they start leaving, get out of their cars. Sheriff doesn't even care anymore. He's like, all right, do what well, you the only do. person that tried to stop him was. Was Reverend Werewolf. Was Reverend, wait, wait. We, do we, we want to spoil it? Spoil we didn't it get to Reverend yeah. Werewolf. But, <laughs> but he is. 
We, it's the you've Reverend. Seen, you've Reverend seen the damn Lowe. movie. If you're listening yeah, to this podcast, it's not because you want to. This movie you're, came you're, out in 1985. Some of us were born game. in that time. You're not going to listen to this episode of the podcast if you haven't seen the movie. So it's Reverend Werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> Reverend, yeah. Spoiler alert. So he's a trying to get all these this. people to yeah, stop going out. Yeah, he's the only one who's like, no, I'm going to fucking eat you if you don't okay. stay here. Like, stay I don't, at home. Well, at that point, he was still somewhat at least coherent. It wasn't until later when he just started losing his shit. Yeah. Well, but I think now he, he, maybe I later. think he wanted. He didn't want. I think it, he knew that the werewolf side of him wasn't going to be able to resist well, killing think about, them. Well, if it's now, a big well, yeah, meal like if all the these assholes from the bar are going to be out there tonight, then I'm hungry. Well, it's one of those things where it's like not, well, knowing what we know now. It's like, damn it! Now I got to kill all these dumb idiots because they're going to come looking after me. Yeah, I got to make an example out of these fuckers. Yeah. But he kills <laughs> and they're, the they're so bad. Like let's just walk in the fog that we can't see. And well, just turn. They all just decided one yeah, area. They I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they go to the spot where Brady was killed. Yeah. And then they kind of just fan out from there. Like, that was the that was the first spot they, they were like, let's go here. And then they just go, what the hell were those dogs going to do? Right. Were those dogs, were they tracking dogs? I or were they, like, they even had dogs. Or were they like, all right, if shit goes sideways, send the dogs and let's get the fuck out of here. Those dogs didn't even look like they were very controllable. I forgot they even had dogs. <laughs> Yeah, they're they're out they're out in the middle of the forest in all this fog, and they have a couple of dogs with them. And I'm like, what are these dogs for? Like, yeah, are they tracking something? Because what do they have? Like, they're all drunk. They have nothing. no plan. They're just going yeah. on. Like, they, were, yeah, they came from the bar. They Jim know. Bob, bring the dogs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so they all run out. Yeah, you had a spot you wanted to. They all go out and looks like a Scooby Doo. What do they look like? They're, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're all go, they're all out there in the fog, and they're running around, and they're like, they don't know what the fuck they're doing, like no. at all, and then. What f- various what weapons too? Various, various weapons, weapons, guns, <laughs> shotguns, rifles. Bad I said bartender they, has the, the peacemaker. The with yeah. peacemaker was on hand, and they're all out there. And I, I guess when you're a small town in the Northeast, no matter how old you are, you, you go. can't be called chicken because then we have this awesome part as well. Come on! I don't know. What's the matter, Bobby? You're gonna make lemonade in your pants? All right, scared. Let's go. And just like that, they're like, "All right, let's go then." Oh, toxic Call me. Macul- masculinity. <laughs> Call me a bitch. Will you? <laughs> that old lady. I'm like, she was just stuck out. I'm like, I know why. Oh, why is there this old lady? That, she's got those red earmuffs. I'm like, it, it just. I know. Me were the, the, was there any even? Were there even any women in the bar? I think. I, she I was think the she one. was there. Yeah, she was. She, was the she only may one. have been the only one yeah. because that's the only one I remember seeing. And that's then, the thing that cracked mm-hmm. me up about it. She had those red earmuffs, and they she just went out. And then we get a great scene of the werewolf picking them off one by one. Well, in the, the other fog. thing that stupid them, they realize, okay, we're going to go hunt for something. And then even one of the guys even brings up the point, uh, we're not going to be able to see a whole lot well. In they don't this even fog. know what they're at, looking okay, for. <laughs> at the point where the dude's leg got caught in the bear oh, trap, yeah, the bear trap. Oh, yeah. I was like, okay, we need to go home, guys. Like, right. We're all drunk. This they guy's going to bleed much. to death, mm-hmm. if not get a gangrene infection on his ankle. You got to you gotta appreciate that the little comedic moment they gave us, too, where it closes again on his <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> He's opening it up, and then, yeah, someone turns around, he's like, oh, hey, guys, and hey. just lets it go on the guy's ankle again. And I'm like, oh, my God. That right there was your foreshadowing that you needed to go home yes. because you're drunk, you there can't you. see, and your old dude over here is about to lose his ankle. Mm-hmm. And the other guy has lemonade in his pants. Yeah. And lemonade, yep. And so that so, leads us into whatever little area that they had where mm-hmm. they couldn't see crap. Yeah, so it gets to the point to where they are in the fog and it's probably on waist to chest high or somewhere around there and they can't see shit. And then the one guy I wrote down, ex- Exposition Big Hat, because for whatever reason this guy's hat didn't fit him. And he's standing there <laughs> and just scared and like, it's in the fog with us. Like how does I'm he? Like, how do you know any of this shit? And if you know this, why be like fuck that? I'm turning around. I'm not getting into the fog anymore. You guys are right? stupid. Like I'm done. I'm done. I'm taking my big ass hat and I'm going home. Going that home? guy is his ankle is going to fall off. And this it, was a big mistake. And they all they're all getting picked off one by one. And a couple of them run, and a few of them just stand there and wait to get eaten. <laughs> well, the thing about it though is like you have your guns, you can't see. Okay, you're gonna die. Start yeah. shooting. Right, like you're gonna die either way. So might as well. And then the bartender gets beaten to death by the piece. Well, he takes in his couple licks with the He thing. gets a couple shots. He does. And I he think, does go down swinging. And I think that's when the werewolf's like, oh, yeah, fuck. Because, yeah, he beats him with the peacemaker. Mm-hmm. He snaps it in half and then beats the crap out of the bartender, which the bartender didn't deserve. No. no. 
That was the one death I'm like, oh, like, yeah. he, he didn't deserve to die. Didn't deserve to die. <laughs> and, then well, the was, and then we're back at church. Though. Well, he here's was, the like, thing he that was cr- a flip flopper, though. The well, he was. The so thing that cracked me up. Yeah. The Reverend doesn't like flip flopping. The thing that cracked me up about the next scene is they automatically show the five caskets because you're like, yeah. What do you think was going to happen? Yeah. You guys like, seriously, there. what did you think was going to happen? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The, so we're back okay. in church. So the church, which is the nightmare scene. Yes, the werewolf. Nightmare I scene. thought this was a great scene. This is one of the, I think, the, the best scenes in the movie. I mean, we don't really get werewolf nightmares a whole okay. lot, but he did go to bed on a full he stomach. Did. I mean, yeah. he ate like five people. So, I mean, you're not and, supposed hey, to And hey, that bartender that. was a pretty big guy. Yeah. So, so I mean, of course he was going to have a nightmare. <laughs> oh, wait, though. Does he eat them, though? It doesn't really show that I think he, he just eats kills them. them. I think he's just killing these people. It doesn't show that he eats any of these people. Uh, if there's pieces missing, I assume that's. He's eating them. Well, that could just be collateral damage. No, he eats them. Okay, but... In my head, he eats them. So. No, no CSI team. So if he's ripping <laughs> yeah. apart and chunks fly 10 yards from him, no one's looking for them. Nope. Some kid's going to find it later. Yep. But one of so, my yeah. favorite things about the werewolf nightmare is that bleeding piano. That bleeding piano was so cool. Or the accordion or whatever. Or not accordion, the but the organ. Um, organ. organ. Yeah. Like it just bleeds out. And this, ladies and gentlemen, if you have not seen the movie, is where he starts throwing the little slot ball about, oh, did we just find out who the killer is mm-hmm. or who the werewolf is? Yeah. And it, well, okay. I mean, it that's kind the of points it out to you the whole time. No, though. like, okay. It didn't tell you who it was. And then they have the nightmare scene and he wakes up and he's like, please God, make it stop or whatever. So like, that's the reveal to me. Yeah. yeah. Even though, like, they try and make it a bigger thing with the whole eye thing. Well, the thing on, about well, the thing about it though, like, right there when that happens, that to me it went from okay, you have a semi-coherent pastor who is actually thinking about his people, like, oh, don't go out there and get killed, do so the right he's thing, a reverend. or reverend, my bell, whatever. <laughs> he's Anyways, a man of the cloth. Isn't he's it? a man of the cloth. <laughs> Anyways, like before that, he was kind of like. Mo- like he was kind of the conscience part like don't go do this you're gonna get yourselves killed yeah. don't do this and then up until after that is to me when he lost his shit because at that point it's like okay he doesn't fucking care anymore he's gonna kill start killing everybody now yeah he gets he definitely starts to unravel because up until that like paul said that was the reveal it's like okay you have the reveal and now mm-hmm. like shit's out the window because up until then they did a good point about trying to get you to guess who it might be yeah like who is it? Like you don't know. Like at some point, you would think that it's Uncle Red because Uncle Red came for a visit, and now all of a sudden these things start happening. So they try throwing you off the loop for there, and then all of a sudden, okay, there's the reveal. And if you were thinking you were betting, you probably wouldn't have thought it was the Reverend. Yeah, I think the thing about the nightmare scene to me was, I think it was really cool because you got an insight to be like, what would this normal person who's afflicted with being a werewolf, probably not by choice, obviously, what would their nightmares be like? So this is literally a werewolf had a nightmare about getting eaten by a bunch of werewolves. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was really cool and kind of a mind fuck kind of a what would they what would they be afraid? What would a werewolf be afraid of? Well, see, I think it was more of like he was scared of turning the whole town into werewolves. That's where I took it was like he was like, shit, I made all these people werewolves now. (laughs) But nobody else was turned into a werewolf. No, because he ate them. Oh, I don't know. You don't if he them. ate them, then how are they able to tell who he killed? Mm. Sure ain't the forensic team. Well, yeah. you don't have to eat the whole person. They're not zombies. He just needs a big chunk of meat, and you're full. Or five chunks of meat. I don't know. <laughs> well, then he didn't get shit <laughs> Next out of Brady. Next time I meet a werewolf, yeah, he didn't get crap out of Brady then. He was like, damn it, I wasted well, a kill. See, like, Brady oh, no, we all just him. hated Brady so Brady much. Was <laughs> like, he, he was, it was one of those things where the werewolf was like, all right, Brady's going to be shit when he gets older. I'm just going to take care of this now. Mm-hmm. Because, and that's the thing, too, like, the dad comes in and is like, has anyone seen my son? And so I think... And it's dark. Like, yeah, where, like where the fuck were you looking I mean, for him before? The curfew started, man. <laughs> like, yeah, and, and it's like, you think he's like a single dad or something, but then they show him in the funeral. Yeah, with the wife. And the mom's yeah. there. And I'm like, where was she? Is nobody watching their kids? No, nobody okay, in that town. So, did. creepy playing organ. Mm-hmm. Bleeding. Makes piano. a return. Mm-hmm. We get to the, you know, please God, let it end. And then we cut to the carnival has been canceled. Mm. And, and then Janie's, Janie's back Janie's to being like, a bitch. Oh, sorry, cripple Marty. <laughs> doesn't she say, like, oh, the king doesn't get what he wants or something like that? Something like that. I think it's funny. Like, carnival's yeah. canceled due to the lynch mob being murdered. Yeah. And now he, the, the brother, the Marty's sad, and she makes a comment about how, why does everybody make a big deal about when he's sad because something happened? I know, geez, Janie, just let the boy I know, have his feelings. It, it was funny to me that they're driving through the town, and it's like, they another, like, oh, remember the curfew? They're driving through the town, and I'm like, 
is this the town like is this Gatlin in Nebraska the the children of the corn town it as might driving be. through it could be I'm like yeah. this is what happened in in children of the corn actually like the, the, there was a werewolf everyone left and then stupid <laughs> kids just were like I don't know yeah. they murdered everyone the werewolf and, ate all the parents it, yeah <laughs> it, it, it wasn't even it's not even what happened in the town like these the kids just made up a stupid kid well story. the thing that gets me about the carnival is there you can they are establishing that everybody is following the curfew but they're the one family that's going to go to the carnival and because the, there's the carnival supposed to be scheduled it's going to be open. It's just going to be open. Like, yeah. What did you think was going to happen? There's a curfew where they don't want stuff out mm-hmm. because of something going around killing people. Yeah, and so they're so disappointed that they have Drunkle Red back over. Drunkle for Red dinner. comes over and they have a barbecue. And then I wrote, <laughs> they're having the moment where Drunkle Red's finishing the new silver bullet and Marty is complaining about Janie. And he's like, she's off of there showing off her tits. I'm like, Dude. acting like she's never, nobody's ever had tits before. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> like, why are you talking about your sister's tits? This is weird, Marty. Was he talking about his sister? I thought he was yeah. talking about the girl that no, left. He no. was talking about his sister. Yeah. He's like, Janie's off there showing off her tits like no one's ever had tits before. I'm like, that's your sister. And I love man. how like, just like so inappropriate Drunk Old Red is. Like. That kid should have never had that thing. Like, he made him a motorcycle. <laughs> that, that was, was a motorcycle. Yes. <laughs> that is basically a fucking motorcycle with a wheelchair on yes. it. He made him a motorcycle. And, oh, yeah, I thought it was funny that it's like he finishes it, brings it out, and then Drunkle Red goes around the corner and looks. Dad's through the grill. Mom's there getting food ready. And then she's like, hey, Red. And he's like, hey. And then just walks away like, oh, not doing nothing. Don't worry about anything over here. Not spying well, then, on you guys. And then two seconds, a fucking motorcycle starts and no one <laughs> says or does Nobody anything. Nobody hears it is no. the thing. Well, the other thing that I thought was a little funny, too, is you see Marty take off in the motorcycle. And that you can establish that thing is fast. So he's probably out of sight before you know it. Yeah. And they show Uncle Red looking at him like all proud. Like, oh, look at him go. Look at him. He's mm-hmm. like, you probably lost sight of him within the first minute. Yeah. He's got some really good eagle eyes if you can see him. And then he comes back and he's on the ground. He's like, "You're gonna kill me. You're gonna like get a get heart attack. Happened. Like, he then just... take that thing away from the child you just gave it to." <laughs> That's the thing. All of a sudden, yeah, you see you, him on the ground. Like, what happened? He yeah. crunk, fell. He he goes for a joyride, and you have this beautiful '80s music montage mm. scene where he's just driving around, like around cars. So zip, this thing yeah, can go faster traffic, than like, traffic. Does bringing it back to the down. Forrest Gump thing. That's what it kind of reminded me of when Forrest started running when he everywhere. Gets to run. He gets to <laughs> run. So now he gets to run everywhere. <laughs> and now Marty is like, I just felt like driving. And again, <laughs> nobody is concerned that there's a murder in this town. And maybe Marty shouldn't just go well, get everyone, free reign of any place in this town. Everyone's only been murdered at night. Mm. So as long as it's not night, Okay, so back to the you're, everybody you're getting murdered at night. They finish dinner. And then Drunkle Red has even more inappropriate gifts for Marty in a form of a bag of fireworks. fireworks. Because Marty was sad he couldn't get his fireworks. And Drunkle Red... Tells him to wait till his parents go to sleep. <laughs> and they go by the himself. Yeah, he's, no, well, he, hey, well, the other thing to, about to Drunkle Red's credit, he does say, "Stay, stay near the house." Says, yeah, he told him a bunch of times, "Stay, near, stay the house. near the house." Stay near the house. He's like, "These are these are for the good guys." Not and the- then this is where we find out that Marty can climb out of his window <laughs> down too. <laughs> Again, a terrible <laughs> person Silver playing bullet. a person who cannot use <laughs> his okay. legs. Marty is just has. Superhuman upper body uh, strength. Upper body okay. strength, yeah. He doesn't need legs. But he can clear... And they, it, it almost looked like they had something specifically for him to climb out the window, yeah. right? Like, what was that scale... Or, like, the scaffolding the thing scaffolding that they had? scaffolding, it looked like there was probably was, supposed to be some vines or some yeah, whatever <laughs> plants in there. It looked it, like it was specifically for Marty to climb down the window. Was it more lattice? What was it? <laughs> we don't know what it was, but it was anticipating that he was going to climb down eventually. But, yeah, so he climbs out this window and onto his silver bullet and then drives... About 20 minutes away, it looks like. Yeah, like, it's, like, it's like not weird, close. It's like yeah, it's a scaffolding. Like, it's meant for him to climb out the side of the And by the way, who has scaffolding on the side of their house like that? <laughs> well, if you've got a crippled son. Apparently. It's the escape route in case there's a fire. It's the escape route. But, yeah, so then he gets out, and he drives far away from his house to this park he thing. did to not water. listen to Drunkle, Drunkle After, Red. After, like, five people just died in the woods in his town. And he thinks it's still a good idea that he gets to go play with these fireworks. And he's just sitting there playing with fireworks for some reason. That's maybe what um, 
the werewolf was like, what, what's this? It's Illegal fireworks a, and you're littering in my town? Like At the park in the middle of the night. Like, what was Marty's sin that the werewolf was like, he needs to be eliminated? I think at that point, he was just a werewolf. Who he was, just didn't care anymore. Just, I think is what it, it was. It, it, he was like, I killed five over. people mm-hmm. that were trying to kill me. I want to teach these people a lesson. So he comes upon Marty in the woods very unsafely with fireworks. And how blind as fuck is Marty? That very the, close. That he <laughs> yes, is, he that was he so is close like, to him. That he is like walking up. He's in the middle of like this bridge or whatever, and like the werewolf who just looks horrible, by the way, when they finally <laughs> yeah. fully show the werewolf. And I'm like, is this a bear man? What is yeah, this? It's, man bear pig. It's a little rough. Can we do the talk about how Marty's setting off all these fireworks and making it light up around this lake or whatever he's, he's making at. a bunch of noise and to like, attract things to the him. The werewolf is like just at the water. You're telling me Marty couldn't just see a werewolf at the water? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like 20 well, feet from Well, he was him. behind the bushes at first, but then when he gets to the bridge and he's just walking up on Marty, I'm like, really, Marty? I know, like, Marty you don't hear the, st- mm-hmm. the stomping on your the Your legs don't work, but your eyes should. Yes. And your ears. <laughs> and you don't hear a werewolf stomping on wood planks. Yeah. And then rolls up on him. Like, you don't think to hear the wood planks? Yeah, there's no sound there. There's nothing. Like, he's just He's just sneaking up on him in his ugly bear suit. And then all of a sudden, Marty is a dead eye with his fireworks. Right in the eye. Right in the eye. He's the best shot. Well, he does the whole str- I'm struggling to, to light the match. And yeah. conveniently, it goes straight for his eye. Yeah. And then he just starts his motorcycle. Yeah. I do and love like... I do love his his afraid, like, fear face when he's driving back. And he's, like, scared as <laughs> shit. I thought that was That was the best piece. Yeah. yeah that's the best piece. Piece that of is acting that he's kid, done yeah. in in the whole <laughs> he's movie. Terrified, he and when he gets back shitless. in that window and he's covering himself with a blanket, yeah, that and is then a the terrifying. Dumbass child. leaves the window open. I know. I'm like, what is they gonna do? <laughs> Clearly, this werewolf can climb scaffolding as well as lattice. Well, I don't know. He can climb lattice, but who knows about scaffolding? Uh, so then, what happens? Yeah. We see the beginning in the morning where he tells his sister, "I saw it." Oh yeah, oh, he calls shopping. Red in the middle of the night. He calls his drunk. Oh, yeah, yeah, he like, calls drunk Red. Yeah, he calls drunk Red. Okay. So there's no sponsor from Burger King in this movie. However, Wild Turkey makes an yeah. appearance like I don't know <laughs> how many times. That is that is Drunkle Red's drink of choice. Mm-hmm. Is wild wild turkey. turkey. So call Drunkle Red in the middle of the night. He's got a Wild Turkey in and a somebody. I, uh, he's a new got, lady friend. He's got somebody with him. We'll say I don't know if it's four. a prostitute, a lady of the four. night, <laughs> a working gal. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny to me that he was like, there's no such thing as werewolves, and hangs up the phone. And then she's like, who is that? He's like, oh, obscene phone call. I'm like, who the fuck <laughs> is calling you at three in the morning to be like, are there werewolves? <laughs> and that that was the explanation she took. And then, just... so Marty's confused. His uncle doesn't believe him. So he tells Jane. And then Jane's like, okay, well, let's figure out who it is. And goes on her little med cute thing, right? She gets into it really yeah, easily. Yeah, she's just for like, having... okay, werewolf, got it. She for can convince been pretty like, quick. Yeah, for having been like, fuck you, Marty, the whole time. He's like, yeah. you know what? There's a werewolf, and if you see someone in town that's missing an eye, that's a werewolf. Mm-hmm. So she goes to, to help out the med cube drive. She goes and to do some recon. Store to store and door to door. And to me, it's like, is everyone in this town just mute? Because everyone, yeah, because everyone's <laughs> still. Yeah, she goes into the barber shop, and I'm like, who is this weird, uh, like, bird man that's, like, staring at her yeah. while she's, like, trying to look for everybody? They all talk to and each other really just intensely. Rolls up on like, that one dude with a towel on his face. Yeah, and uncovers the, him. Yeah, that's the jerk from the, the gun store that yeah. owns the yeah. gun that's store. Asshat. He mm-hmm. didn't die. So why didn't. No, he ran. Why yeah. didn't, yeah, why didn't Werewolf. Go try to hunt him. Go down. get him. Like he's the one that should have died in that whole altercation in the forest in the fog. Well, he ran shit. faster. He ran first. He was a smart he was a pussy. One. He was a smart. Because asshats usually are. Yeah. <laughs> well, so he's there and obviously has no cans or bottles for the med you drive. Nope. And so she keeps going in and you know those are things. Finally, gets to a point where my basket's full. Where I don't know where she got this basket. She got a lot of bottles. Mm, she did. And cans in that little shopping cart. Persistence paid off for her. Mm-hmm. And then it looked like she was finally going to give up. Like, he's crazy. I don't know why I did this. 
This yeah. is dumb. And so she takes her bottles to Reverend Lowe, right? Reverend Lowe, Lester Lowe. Lester Lowe. And discovers... Who's got an eye patch in the garden. But she doesn't see the eye she patch She doesn't yet. see it. She right. takes him into the, the garage, right? She yeah, takes she, all the cans into the gar- garage. He's yeah. gardening. You can't see him. And then all of a sudden when you see him is when the big reveal is, oh... His eye is damaged. Well, I, wait, Jane I have to finds say, the peacemaker. In she sees the, the peacemaker cans. first, yeah. and then yeah. and then I have to say, there's something unsettling about a reverend in full, you know, priest gear, like gardening. I don't all know why. I just there was something <laughs> weird about it <laughs> to me. It's like it's just like unsettling to me. Like, <laughs> like is that all you wear? Like you don't have you regular have clothes. Wear. Like, no, you know, you put the robe on He's for service and all that. But like, who drives so, yeah, a pretty? Pretty cool Chevelle. Yeah. So well, that's the thing. What happens? What she gets scared by the little mouse. She run falls yeah. into into the cans, which yeah. we think. Okay, Kim thought. Oh, we're gonna see a body. No, no, no. We don't. No, see a body. we no. see the peacemaker. We see the chunk of peacemaker that's left over. So to me, because the werewolf was like, "This is cool. I'm taking no, it home." Like, <laughs> he's like, he's collecting <laughs> trophies now. Yeah. So he's full on flip to just murderous. Can't control it. And I'm collecting trophies, and I'm going to store them in this fucking garage, because I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm Reverend Werewolf. And then when Reverend, Reverend Werewolf shows up, <laughs> yep, Reverend she Werewolf. just kind of gives that whole creepy vibe of... Yeah, she oh. goes... Yeah, he's no, he's there was, got yeah. such a creepy presence and she, in that and scene. And again, her fear face in this scene yeah. is amazing as well. Like, she does a great job of the, being the just intensity. scared shitless. Yeah, the intensity well, between the two of them. Like, well, it's when she just finally a... sees him, I think that's the one thing where she's like, oh yeah, shit, Marty was she, telling the truth. She mm-hmm. pieced it together, the peacemaker chunk is on the floor, and I turn around and he's there, eye patch and everything, and then I'm like, he does like, what part of this was he trying to comfort her? Was he trying to comfort her or was he trying to be like, I have to take you out? Did he know I, at that point? No, he, he knew. He knew. He knew. He because knew. because, because yeah. I that think point. either way, it was creepy to me that he's like, why don't you come into the parlor? Well, I think he- Kind of hang out for a bit. When but he I'm knew, a girl to reference. When he knew who she knew was when she found the peacemaker. He's yeah. like, oh, crap. And then everything he tried to do to get her to go in there, be like, oh, lay down. He's like, oh, I'm, I'm good. I think I just I had just too to much home. sun. Yeah. Or could he have just set that up because he's like, oh, Janie's here. And she's going to go in and find it. Because he doesn't care. He's yeah. got it just in the fucking mm-hmm. garage. And he's like, yeah, go in the garage. Put your shit in there. And I'll tally up your sheet or whatever. And he just leaves it in there. Because doesn't the cop find it, too? Well, the thing about it, though, is she found it by accident. Yeah. She fell she into found the it. So, I don't, so I don't think he would have. Okay. I don't think he was planning on her finding it by accident. Because but if pro- you know that you just murdered someone and your trophy <laughs> from that murder is in the garage under but a bunch of cans. Does he even remember the trophy? Because the werewolf took the trophy, not remember. But wolf. if he doesn't remember that he kills these people, then he wouldn't know who the werewolf is either. That's not true. You know you're a werewolf. Then you, you know who you'll kill if you're a werewolf. <laughs> well, yeah, but you don't know what things you've taken from those people. So, so you don't yeah, know that so the werewolf, maybe the werewolf just walked home like a dog with the peacemaker in his mouth. <laughs> That's what it was. He <laughs> likes to play fetch every once in a while yeah. when when he gets bored. He's mm-hmm. done guarding, he wolfs out, and plays so this fetch. is when we finally get what the creepy reverend thing going yeah. from there. From then on, I also put like Jeannie, If you want to get bottles, why don't you ask Drunkle Red for all his wild turkey bottles? Those got to be yeah, worth some money. So, and so that could have been a full card on its own. And then did they talk by themselves, or is Drunkle Red there as well? I don't think Drunkle Red's there. I think Drunkle Red was off doing something else. No, so like she comes so back she, to Marty, no, right? No, like she gets back, right? Mm-hmm. And and they're like, we don't know what to do. And Marty goes, I think I know. And then the next scene, he's like making yeah, a ransom like, letter. Gotta, <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I wrote down. I'm like, you're you're making the serial killer letters, <laughs> like you, the cut out serial killer ransom letters. Yes. So I'm like, and Marty's just like, I know what we need to do. Here's cut out the here's ransom a good letters plan. in the mail. I'm threaten like, him to tell him to kill himself because we know yeah, who you are. Here's a, here's a good plan. Yep. And I thought it funny that when Jamie's is like, when she goes to mail the letter, she's just kind of looking around like, do do do, just Bones mailing and... a ransom letter. Right. It's not really. I mailed ransom. three she letters for him. Why, cons- Jane? Why would you mail letters? And then when, when being the next very day. conspicuous in her actions. No, yeah, like that that was the that was the uh, the voiceovers. Like after the third day, we told Uncle Red. Yeah. And that's when you get the whole you get the whole thing. It was like. I wrote down, do we need to have this conversation in public? Why are we just at like this public They're bench under there. a tree when he's like, okay, so this guy's a werewolf, and I know because this happened and this happened and everything. That's when Gary Busey has, I think, his greatest line. I'm a little too old to be playing the Hardy Boys meet Reverend Werewolf. <laughs> Which Reverend Werewolf is a cool band name. So yes. anyone out there looking for a band name, mm-hmm. Reverend Werewolf, I think is awesome. Yep. 
And so after receiving these ransom letters, naturally, Reverend well- Werewolf, it's really hard to say. I know. I got yeah. tongue tied. So Reverend like, Werewolf. Reverend Werewolf. Reverend Werewolf. Reverend Werewolf. So How they, Gary Busey got that line down? It must have taken I, so long. He was drunk, <laughs> I'm telling you. You just lean into the, the slurring of your words. <laughs> Reverend Werewolf. I'm the only way playing Hardy Boys and Reverend Werewolf. Uh, yeah, so uh, naturally, Reverend Werewolf is not happy about receiving ransom letters. Well, so, and no, shits. well, you, okay, first they go on their own little stakeout. And I thought it was funny. They're sitting outside. <laughs> well, yeah. again, he, he was he gardening or was he yeah. playing with the. No, he, he was reading something he on was the. He's playing the letters on the yeah. board, on the church board. He's like, you know, there's a werewolf, so come to church. And they're not even that far from him. Like, I know, they, they're not. The, I, I wrote down the like, Reverend could just turn around. Yeah, and I, see thought, I wrote that down too. I'm like, he's just going to turn around and be like, what yeah. are you. What are you guys doing over there? <laughs> yeah, that's what they were going to do. <laughs> it just like, he just like, turns around and he's like, hi. And you can see hey he's disappointed you in guys know I He's like, what the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> and like, no what? one has tinted windows, so no, it's not like no anything's going to hide them. And they're in a station wagon. Like, yeah. the most... <laughs> Conspicuous. Vehicle. No, I don't know. Back then, that might have been the most inconspicuous. Like, <laughs> oh, it's true. a station wagon. It could be anybody in this town. No, so they stake they stake out Reverend Werewolf, and still Uncle Red is just not. Nope, convinced. I'm not buying it. Not convinced. And so then another another rousing trip of Marty on his motorcycle that is not a wheelchair, his actual motorcycle. He's out and about, and no, Reverend that's, Werewolf that's, starts to well, come after him. Right. That's when Marty has his legs seen. Yes, that's Holy when he's dude. staring watching longingly the at the kid. children. Yes. He's watching the kids, and you have those yeah, you have those close-up shots of just like these kids', kids legs, legs while they're playing yeah. baseball. It's a very and awkward, like, uncomfortable Marty's like, oh. <laughs> scene. <laughs> We're just longingly. I, I know a bunch guys. of people have just died, but I have to existentially think of how I can't use my legs, because that's what that whole scene is. Yeah, it's that, a very that. weird moment yeah, and in the it, movie. And it's like no one's even a jerk to Marty in this town. Like we've already no. said, like they got no, 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 the only the people right. that are jerks to him are his fam is his sister. It's his family, mm-hmm. and it's his sister, family, especially yeah. Janie. But and it's that like one, everyone and the one in the town. guy who died earlier, who didn't want him dating his daughter, who wanted to electrocute well, all the cripples. He's he's out of the picture now. Yeah, but it's like even the kid is like, "Hey, we're gonna go get a soda. You want to come with us, Marty?" He's like, "No, I can't. My legs don't work. <laughs> 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 I'm just gonna go home." But yeah, it's a very weird scene at a very weird time in the movie because, like, Marty's like, there's a fucking werewolf out here. He knows I know there's the a werewolf. Yeah, he and, yet, werewolf and yet he's out, <laughs> on his, go yet he's out by baseball. himself. Yeah. It's out, he's out by himself because it's daytime again. So no one's going to die. Yeah, no one's, one's going to get murdered during the daytime. I really think people back then thought that. Like, it's broad daylight. No one's going to get killed. the awesome chase scene. We get into the chase scene, and why I wrote down. Why is Marty always out of fucking gas? Always. Yeah. This kid this is the is worst. A gas guzzler. This kid is the worst. The la- well, even in the last wheelchair, he was like, he was "Oh, running out of gas. I gotta out. go get gas." Mm-hmm. And that was he's like, "Shit, I'm out of gas again. I stared too long, letting my silver bullet idle while I was looking at everybody's legs play baseball. <laughs> I'm even, out of gas." Even though there's a, a literal werewolf that I know about. <laughs> and that's when we finally see Reverend Werewolf finally decide, you know what, I'm going to do something about these little yes. shits. In in human form. And he tries to give him his whole justification for murdering everyone. Yeah. And he's like, well, she was going to kill herself and her unborn baby, and I saved her soul. So now she doesn't go to hell. So go so to now hell. she won't go to hell, and it's my burden, Marty, and blah, blah, blah. And, and I love that he's like, I would never actually hurt you. I hope you understand that, Marty, and blah, blah, blah. But then it's like he gets so fed up with Marty that he just lets it go. You see how all things serve the will and the mind of God. You see... You meddling little shit! <laughs> I think that's the part he just yeah, loses. Is like does. you, damn, like, damn it, you cripple! Bastard. Damn it! But yeah, I think at that point, it's it's apparent within the film that the they're he's Reven, lost it. Yeah, Revan Lowe is losing a fighting battle against he's the beast it. within. And I find it funny that I'm like, okay, you're a werewolf. The only one that knows this technically is Marty and Janie. And, you know, he doesn't know Drunkle Red knows or whatever. Yeah. And his response is, I'm going to run you off the road. Mm -hmm. And make it look like an accident. In my own car. In my own car. Well, there's no CSI. (laughs) Apparently. Drunkle Red is the only CSI (laughs) because he sees the paint transfer and all that. Well, here's the other thing you got to rewind a little bit back. Back with the whole scene. The other thing that threw me off that I thought was hilarious is you're in the bridge and all of a sudden he sees this big, huge piece of farming equipment drive across. (laughs) Yeah. And he starts screaming for help, which makes me wonder, 
okay, these people have really good eagle eyes and really, really good hearing because he happened to hear the kid over. Yeah, the guy's over, in a tractor yeah. or whatever. Over a tractor. Like, a farming equipment and Marty is inside. Yeah, Marty's yelling at him yeah, with his shrill little kid voice. Bridge, and yeah. he happens to, well, there's maybe a lot of echo in there. Mm. And I find it funny that he starts yelling out for that guy and he turns around and the Reverend's like, shit. And he just takes <laughs> yeah. off. He's like, fuck it. Can't kill Marty now. Well, oops, somebody it. might hear. Like, somebody Foiled again. <laughs> It's hey, he monologued. That's what happened? <laughs> yeah, you don't yeah. monologue. If Reverend Werewolf would have monologued, monologue. he gets help. We see them what back at the house, and they finally try to convince. Well, first he has the whole scene with Drunkle Red, where he's like, "I don't believe you," like blah blah blah, and then he finds the paint transfer. Yeah, they find and the paint transfer from because he asked cars. The, he asked the sister. What color is his car? Blue. Yeah, he's like, that car changes colors in every other scene, I feel like, like in blue? this movie. I never paid attention to it, really. To me, it seemed like, I don't even remember it being blue. I thought it was like a black. It, it looked it like looked, a midnight it, it's blue. Some, in some scenes, it looked black. Other scenes, it looked kind of gray. Yeah. And then apparently it was blue the whole time. <laughs> because that's what they needed. And yeah, so you, that convinces um, Drunkle Red to at least so say, finally. Okay. Drunkle Red goes to the, the sheriff, sheriff and tells him, like, I want to know, like, what exactly did he tell the sheriff? I know, because clearly he's like, so you believe in werewolves? Like, <laughs> the sheriff is like, like what, what did you have to tell the sheriff to get the sheriff to believe, like, okay, well, and I think even the sheriff has taken it with a grain of salt that he's like, all right, well, I'll go check this guy out if you say that he hit him with the car. But yeah. that's why I'm like, did Drunkle Red even say, you know, werewolf at all? Or did he say, you know, I think he I might be killing remember. the people and yeah, well, they Marty don't show found it, out. Yeah. They like, just show the after. Like yeah. he just, yeah, he just shows, it's just like right after he tells him everything and he's kind of like, do you believe it? He's like, oh. And since the poor, there's only two cops in this town, he has to go check him out by himself because <laughs> the other guy was off apparently. <laughs> yeah. And I think. And it's funny to me that he's going in there and everything, he's just smoking a cigarette, knocking on the door, like, through. hey, you know, I'm going to come check some stuff out, but I don't believe any of this kind of craziness and until he finds the peacemaker. Mm -hmm. yep. And the car. He looks at the car. He too, sees the car. He sees, he sees, the car. Wait, they, does he find the peacemaker? I don't remember him finding I don't Wait, I think either. he, no, he, I know he finds the car. Yeah. He sees the paint transfer, and that's when he's like, oh, okay, shit's real. So at mm -hmm. the very least, I know I got him on trying to run Crip Marty over. off the road, yeah. and that's which when Marty him. can corroborate. Mm -hmm. And what? then, yeah, and he's kind of looking around. I'm like, Reverend Werewolf comes out of the corner. I'm like, there was nothing back there. Like, were you just hanging out in the corner in the yeah, dark? Yeah, he's just waiting for people. <laughs> Like he's just like, well, someone's in here. I guess I've got to come out. Yeah, now. so Reverend Werewolf comes out still as human form. Who comes out? Reverend Werewolf. <laughs> and then we finally mm -hmm. see him actually transform that was, into the werewolf. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, was one of maybe my top five transformations. Definitely not the best. but I hate the cop's that, reaction in that. That transformation scene, I think, he was pretty good. He sees him turn. And he screams, right? He's screaming while he's watching him turn instead of turning and running. <laughs> like, it's fight or flight, go. people. Fight or flight. Just go. Just turn around. I'm going to let him turn and then he I'm going to scream. Well, apparently then... it was, he made lemonade in his pants apparently and he so. just stood there. That's and a, he gets hit in the head with something once and he gets it's a big ass gash on his no, head. No, I thought it was funny too because, okay, like I said, he's in there with Marty and then... Marty starts screaming for the guy, and Reverend's like, shit, I better get out of here. And then has enough sense in mind to come home, clean the garage so he can park his car in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because remember, when Janie went in there, there's cans and bottles just everywhere on the floor. And then she knocks more over. Yeah. Plus, where was she going to put hers, or either way? So he has enough sense in mind to be like, fuck, cops are coming after me. That's why he's waiting in the garage. Cleans out the garage. Puts the car in there and is like, well, I'm just going to sit here in the dark and whoever comes by, uh, I'm going to have to take care of him. He has a lot of free time on his hands. He's a reverend. What? That's well, his, he's what he off. works once a week, man. He's, what he's does he do? He's killing off the, like 200 people in this town. He's so. killing everybody off. Okay, so <laughs> he works <laughs> once a too. week. What else has he got to do besides garden and change the sign? He already did that this mm -hmm. week. So yep. This is a full week. So now what do we have? We have Marty talking to Drunkle Red again. Because now the sheriff's yes, gone missing. So now the sheriff's yeah, missing. Because yeah. he says, look, we told the sheriff, he went to check him out, and now he's missing. Now you have to make us a silver bullet. So <laughs> take this and make me a silver bullet. Take this necklace and make For, me So we hear the name of the movie like again. the again. fourth or fifth mm -hmm. time now, I think. 
And Marty is apparently up on, you know, werewolf lore and knows that he needs to have between, a silver bullet. Yes, between made. werewolf werewolf knowledge between Marty and Janie, I think. Janie. Janie, mm-hmm. yes. They they know a lot about werewolves. Even she she even says like I think he says he says, Well maybe when the moon out when the moon comes out he gets wolfier. I thought yeah. that was the <laughs> funniest and thing. And she's he's like, like, Maybe he doesn't even know how we became a werewolf. <laughs> He's just always been like, there. We don't need background, bitch. Like, He's gonna kill us if we don't do something. You guys go to the library and look up werewolves. <laughs> like, what so is then it? they give them what? Their two, their yeah, rosary. They yeah, yeah. So necklace. there is like, okay, uh, a, a cross and a pendant. I yeah, think. here's a cross. Here's my pendant. Mm-hmm. It's silver. Please make us a take silver it, bullet. And yeah, it, and yeah. he does say wolfier. Yeah. He does say wolfier. He does. Yeah. And then so uh, Drunkle Red knows exactly where he can get a silver bullet. Made. It's a small town, which I'm assuming maybe he had to go to the town over to, to this guy who also oh, knows. Oh, so he did. Okay. little side note to rewind. He did use the peacemaker to kill the sheriff. Yes. He did. Okay. That's yes. right. He did. Because when he hit him he in the head. Picks it up. Mm, yes. He hits him in the head. And he kills him with the right. peacemaker. Mm-hmm. Yes. Thank you, Producer Kim. Yes. So the peace, so, uh, so that does so confirm. Yes, yeah, the peacemaker is really the star of this fucking it really film. Is. All right, it so now that confirms, and if he hadn't already have known that he was a werewolf, that yeah, he's the one who did all the killings. Yeah. Okay. So Drunk Red takes the every the silver over to this. He's an older worldly. <laughs> yes, the voiceover is like old worldly craftsman. Yeah. Like, he makes bullets, and, like he like what is? But that guy did know an awful lot about werewolves as well, because he was like, got to shoot really straight and. Yeah, you know, kill he, your he werewolf sure problem. Well, right off the bat, because Gary Busey tried to make, or Drunkle Red tried to make an excuse. Oh, my cu- my nephew's all into this, and he's into the Lone a- Ranger, and he wants a silver bullet. Yeah, and he's not buying. He's like, yes. When, and when Red shoot. handed that over, I'm like, where's the other one? Did you pawn that? I know. <laughs> you, you, he, he needed he, another bottle of wild he, turkey. He was out. <laughs> he was like, all right, one for me, one for well, the he silver just bullet. That. Like, Woman of the night as well. So. Well, that's the you thing. Don't the, know the, that. So that could just be a regular, upstanding <laughs> woman in the town. Okay, okay so that's how a... dare you judge her for nothing? I'm not. I'm just saying her profession. Woman of the night. Said my, why is that her profession? <laughs> so Gunsmith isn't buying, and he says the whole thing about oh, yeah, look, like, I'm not buying the the Lone Ranger thing. He's like, no. it's for a werewolf. Mm-hmm. It's got a low green. It's got a low green in case you need to shoot. It's like, oh, I'm not going to shoot. That. Pretty straight. Like, what am I going to shoot anyway? Yeah, and he's like, oh, about a werewolf. And then Drunkle Red is fully on board with this idea of sending the parents away. Where now. does Drunkle Red get the money for this? Right? What does he do for see. a living? Nobody they don't knows. say. He said he won. He, he told he's the just parents a he won. Yeah, he bought, uh, was it to New York or something? Yeah. Like it, mm-hmm. it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't far yeah. away, but it couldn't have been that, you know, inexpensive. The, the story he came up with. Yeah, like he won like a he romantic won. getaway for, for two. Yeah. yeah. On just just right after I break up with Sheila and everything. Yeah. So, so I'm like, what does Drunkle Red do that he's got money for Wild Turkey all the time and can build this silver bullet was basically, like we said, a motorcycle with a wheelchair strapped to it. Drunkle Red's got some money. Bag of fireworks. So why did Drunkle Red need the silver stuff for to make the bullet? So. so he finally does that, and he sends the parents away, who are like, okay, we're out. Yep, they leave, and so Drunkle Red's like, yeah, I have a gun and a silver bullet, no, wait, and hold your on, parents hold are on. out of town. So. No, hold on. <laughs> The parents leave, and again, I'm like, why are you just leaving them with Drunkle Red? Like, how many arguments yes, the did the whole mom time like, The mom has not been on board with like, Drunkle yeah, Red. How and many now arguments sudden, does she have about she's like, him? like, free babysitter. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, like, you're drunk all the time. Why are you? I don't want you around Marty. I don't want him to see you like this. Like, okay, we're going out of town. We'll be back in a few days. Don't let trick or treaters in the house. Like, what was that right? about? Why like, would you let trick or treaters in the like, house? Like, who's, who's coming, coming into your house? That's like, who's trick or treating when there's a damn werewolf? Like, live in the country. Like, it's not like yeah, they don't even have far. like neighbors. So, like, yeah, they like, look like they had like a spot in the woods. Yeah. So, like, if you have any kids coming to your house a trick or treat, you know, to trick or treat at night when you're out in the country, I'm like, yeah, you should let them in. Because, you know, there's fucking werewolf eating people and shit. <laughs> right? Yeah. Your house. But no, she's like, no, fuck them kids. They can find their own way home. You guys stay in the house. Mm-hmm. All right. So now we get into. It's the final so, yeah, evening. Everyone falls Drunkle asleep. Red. And then you can tell he was fed up with these kids. He's like, it's three in the morning. He hasn't shown up. Go to bed. Like, Go to bed. And then Marty's like, what if I say no? And then Drunkle Red just kind of gives him like, well, I'll fucking tip like, you, you over and leave you here, yeah. you little bastard. He's like, you little shit. Now you're not listening to me. Mm-hmm. 
And then Janie screams. She because she sees she sees a werewolf face in the window. And she's like, "Are you sure you saw a werewolf?" It's a werewolf. Is it's anybody a... sure of anything? At this yeah. So the power, yeah, the power goes out and everyone's freaking out. Except and the for whole Uncle Red, time, he says it no. could be nothing. Yeah, he's and still... the whole time, like Drunkle Red's, like he takes the bullet out and he's having this this whole talk about it, and then the power goes out and he's still just standing there with the bullet in his hand. Mm-hmm. I'm like, just put this fucking bullet back. I'm like, I don't care who it is, even if it is just a power outage, you know that potentially there's a fucking werewolf out there. Right. Leave it. Or in he, at the very least, a crazy reverend that's willing to drive Marty off the side of the road. Yeah. And so who, no matter who is out there... And who made put, the police officer disappear. Put the damn <laughs> bullet back in the gun. Stop just holding it in your hand there. Well, he's a drunk. His, he's got a shaky. <laughs> shaky. shaky. He can't. Well, he shouldn't have taken it out to begin with then. No, he shouldn't have. So yeah, put the damn bullet back. But so then, the werewolf shows up at 3 so yes. in the morning. He crashes through yeah, the window. Like noises, was it the window or is it the wall? It was the wall it was like window. The whole wall. No, he, he walked through the window that just took the wall with just it. Just took the whole He thing just up. fucking came in like the Kool-Aid man. Yeah. That was like, <laughs> oh yeah. He just crash through that thing. He just came in and was like, you're all gonna get fucking murdered. He starts beating the shit out of Drunkle Red. Yeah, who did his own stunts. Gary Busey did his own stunts for this movie. (laughs) And apparently he got hurt on the scene where he goes into, I think it's a dresser or something, and there's glass. And even though it was, Mm. you know, fake glass, the thing that I read, he had to run and jump on this, like, catapult thing (laughs) that then (laughs) shot him into the dresser thing, and Uh. I guess he got hurt and he got bloodied a little bit on the uh, on the fake glass from the mirror or whatever. Oh my gosh. So yeah, the, the werewolf who had no problem tearing anyone else to shreds just comes in to kind of just fuck with Drunkle Red or yeah. like, I'm going to throw you over here. Yeah, Busey fights for I'm going to throw you over here. He tries. Then Janie tries to get in on the action. He just she fucking slaps her across the room. She just gets picked up by her head. All and the while. Conveniently, the bullet falls through the air vent. Mm-hmm. All the while, Marty is trying to get the bullet out of the air vent and everyone is just trying to hold off until he gets the bullet we got to hold off reverend werewolf long enough to get the damn bullet out of the out of the grate or whatever mm-hmm. And then they finally do. And I'm like, why is you know, Marty have the gun? And like, any the house gun, I've Jamie. ever been in with the floor vents like that, those things were never attached. You just take it off. <laughs> well, the other thing about it, though, yeah. too, is the vents on that grate where you can get your hand through it. Right? All the ones that I've ever seen. Those yeah, are tiny. tiny. Apparently, yeah. the, the construction of this town is like there's huge gaps in the floorboards. And the grate can fit, uh, mm-hmm. what, what is Marty, like 12, 14? I don't know. He's probably like 15 Too young so. to be having a motorcycle. AKA Too young for a motorcycle, yeah. <laughs> so, he so he gets he, yeah, the bullet. So he gets the gun, he gets the bullet, and again, Marty is a crack shot. He is. At, he can only hit eyes. Mm-hmm. Apparently, so he and, hits- like, and Drunkle Red. What? Okay, he has this weird saying that he said like two or three times in the movie that I couldn't place it, but it sounds like he's like Jesus, Jamie Palomino. <laughs> like, I don't know what he said. He says it over yeah, and over does. again, and he I'm does. like Jesus, Jamie Palomino. <laughs> That's a really great like, impression of you. <laughs> thank by the you. Way. Yeah, but like <laughs> you know, we've we've known each other for quite some time, and I've never heard your Gary Busey. <laughs> I've never had a reason for my Gary Busey impression. So I just need a minute to sit with that. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Angie. We should stop now. (laughs) You need to break (laughs) in. I need to rethink some things that I'm maybe. (laughs) Thanks. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah, he has this weird saying, and then Marty's like, "Oh, Marty's a cripple joke at the end." Where he's oh, like, my legs, I can't feel my leg. Or what? Is, what does he say? Like, I know my legs don't work. Like, like, everybody like, okay? He's like, everybody okay? Was Dude, like, except for sure. my legs. Except for my legs. But again, then the whole thing you see is once he gets shot in the eye, his D transformation back into regular Reverend. I really liked the D transformation, and the the thing that I. Re- my favorite part was you say D transformation. Like what happened to his dick? <laughs> <laughs> like what? What did I see? Did I hear some the D transformation? <laughs> his D transformed was the um, the hair through like the skin, it? and you know that like, they just pulled it through. Or yeah, whatever, but that they, practical effect really worked for me. I didn't like where they were I trying to the CGI effects, at the yeah. end. The practical effects were really great in this just film. Did doing close ups of the dude's chest, and, and so yeah. and the other thing is like, how do you explain this to people at the okay? The sheriff's just dead. Naked dude doesn't know. Like, there's the the <laughs> naked reverend is just he burst through the fucking wall. He broke the wall and he was naked, house. burst through the wall, and, and, <laughs> and we I had, had to, to shoot, shoot him, him in the eye because he was cut with a silver bullet. He was going. <laughs> 
after my people would believe it like oh okay yeah we yeah, got you sure. you're in the right he broke into your house clearly this fucking wall is missing and, and he I'm was like, coming after he was coming like, after marty it's all just okay like they're like oh, the then, werewolf yeah. is dead and, and then, then it ends then they go back to like you know chat we go back over the, the marty's legs don't work and then we go back to work. deanna's voiceover and she's like i love you i love you Good marty night. Like, I Thank you and enough. good night, Thank everyone. You and, good night, Marty. and that was the movie. Very anticlimactic. I'm always That's like, okay, did Marty die young? Is that why she the, was? Yeah, the like... voiceover made it sound like he died yeah, really young. And like... and it is okay. So this movie was based off a short story called Cycle of the Werewolf that Stephen King did. So I would imagine there's probably a lot more differences. But Stephen King did write this screenplay for the movie, so he probably included and embellished and kind of added more things along the way that he wanted to kind of change around with it. And this was probably during his Coke era. So it could have been. It was most likely during his Coke era. <laughs> but again, we I get. Think to, we I think a lot of these. A lot movies. of the eighties were Stephen King's Coke era. <laughs> we get into the the a very anticlimactic ending. How yeah. it just it just it's ends. ends. It's over. But that was the eighties, though. A lot of yeah. movies were like, oh, and, we're gonna and, end on a one liner. And you had terrible. seen this. You had seen this before, right? This wasn't your oh, first this was viewing. Like, I saw this years ago. I saw this when I was like. So it was a revisiting. Of yeah, it was a revisiting okay. to me. Yeah. yeah. See, I watched this religiously. <laughs> Because I it's, saw it when I was. You, it's one of those movies you can have on the background. This not is pay a, this is a every it's Halloween. Good. I know I was a kid us. when I saw it because I remember the ending very. I remember the ending thinking, this werewolf looks terrible. Yeah, yeah. I mean, his transformations were good, but the actual werewolf costume yeah. or whatever was not good. Yeah. And there's a bit of actual like controversy with it because they were trying to work out the werewolf costume and the producer. Dino De Laurentiis, I believe, was unhappy with it and kept saying, nope, I want to change it, change it. So the director got tired of waiting, and they actually started production on everything without a finalized werewolf look. So that's probably why we didn't mm. see it that so, much. So, yeah, and so in the end, it ended up being kind of this weird bear suit mm. <laughs> yeah. that you see in the in the bridge scene. Yeah, the bridge scene's the worst. That's the worst werewolf yeah. one. Is it the bridge scene? All Easy. right. Final thoughts, everyone. Uh, final thoughts on this movie. It's It was what it was. It was the 80s. It's, it's an this, 80s. It, it's an 80s movie. It's a cheesy movie. Overall, it's a Stephen King movie. It's hard to knock a Stephen King movie. But I enjoyed it. If you like the 80s aspect of over-the-top, cheesy, just kind of weird moments, I think you'll enjoy it. Like, I mean, it was a revisit for me. I know I watched it back probably when I was a kid. Must have been about probably 10, 11, 12 years old, somewhere around there. But if you want to watch it, I say go. It's good. For me, it's a yearly watch. I watch it every year. I watch it at Halloween time every year. It's the Stephen King movie where Gary Busey fights a werewolf. How can you not watch it every year? <laughs> you have to give it its own time. It's just like watching any other 80s movies. There's frustrating parts of it. But it's a fun time. It's a, it, It's not a super serious movie to where you have to put a lot of thought and feeling into it. It's just a fun horror movie to watch. It's an 80s movie. It's an 80s movie. There are definitely better 80s movies. There are definitely a lot worse 80s horror movies. Definitely not one of the best werewolf movies. I do like the transformation scenes for myself. The werewolf suit, not so much. Like I said, we kind of talked about the background issues with the whole werewolf suit and everything. But it's a good movie overall. It's it's a classic 80s movie. Definitely one of the ones you got to watch every year. And how can you go wrong with dialogue like this? Oh, that hurts my parts! <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for listening to our very first episode. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can email us at podcast at scarynerd.com. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, as well as Patreon. We'll see you next week.